Now there is a specific key that I want to talk about today and a miracle that's attached to it. Let's dive in. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. I want to talk about the key of submission. The key of submission. Remember Jesus said the kingdom of God, you have to forcefully work your way into it. In other words, you have to alter the way that you think completely. The way that the world teaches you and trains you to get things is the opposite of the way the kingdom works. The world te teaches you, you have to go and take. The kingdom says, submit and I'll do the work for you. Verse 13, it says, Submit yourselves unto every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for, and for the praise of them that do well. Let's stop there. So God is saying, when people come against you, or come to you, and you submit to their authority, I'm either going to punish them for being evildoers, or I'm going to praise them for doing well, based on how they build on the rock of Christ that is in you. Continuing on, it says, For so is the will of God that with well-doing we will put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. I want to give an example of this key of the kingdom. It comes naturally when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you allow God to work through you without animosity hate or hate. But if you let yourself have a heart full of love. I was given the biggest T-Mobile store as one of my early uh, jobs that I got out of college. God blessed me and gave me a store that I didn't even apply for. He just had them call me right after Hurricane Katrina. They found my name somewhere and they interviewed me and ended up giving me the biggest store in the state. In this store I had 12, 15 employees, something like that, and our goal was to get 200 activations. We had to get 200 new lines every month. Well, I had the biggest store in the state. I was the only uh, uh, manager in the entire state that had an office. I had a big old office. I, it, God had truly blessed me and every month I had no problem getting over that 200, 215, 220, 230. Every month I was blessed. Well, the manager that hired me because he blessed me, God blessed him. He got promoted and moved on. However, the new manager that came in, the new regional manager, I should say, she for some reason hated me and everybody could see it. All the other managers in our meetings would come to me afterwards and say, we don't know why this woman hates you so much, but she hates you. She really has it out for you. But God wouldn't let me do anything but show love the entire time. Just love her. Just show passion. Just show compassion. Just show forgiveness. Just continue to try to be a blessing. But no matter what I did, she seemed to just get angrier and angrier with me. Well, one day she I don't know how this happened, must have gone way up through management, but found a way to remove me from my store and make me the manager of a small kiosk in a rundown mall. See, at my store, I couldn't be fired because my numbers were too good. But there was this kiosk in this mall called the Esplanade Mall that nobody was going into. Nobody even went into the whole mall, much less to the T-Mobile store that was in it. Their goal was only 30. My goal had been 200. Their goal was only 30, and in the, the years that I had been a manager, they had never reached that 30, no matter what manager we put there. One manager we put there is now the regional manager. Still, she couldn't get above 10, ever. And any given time that I had been there, she says, you are now going to be there. I'm going to send you in January. I'm not even going to let you get a Christmas rush. You're going in January. And when you fail, then I'll be able to fire you. At that moment, I had a choice to make. I could have quit. I could have done uh, what was in the flesh and yelled at her and said some mean things that I shouldn't have said or any of that. But the spirit of peace came on me. I remember sitting in my office when she gave me this news, looking her in her eyes and putting God's name in it and said, though I disagree with you, God will prevail and he will take care of me anyway. I submitted to the authority without offense and put God's name on it. Well, let me make this long story really short. The very first month I get there, guys, as much as I'd love to take credit for this, it's clearly a miracle because I might be a good manager, but I'm not this good. The very first month, my quota was 30. God sent 60 customers. Keep in mind, this store had never done above 10. God sent me 60. 
I only had two employees at this point. It made no sense. Not only did I do better than I was in the old store, because it went by quota, I doubled my quota. So then I went to the top of the charts. I was the number one manager in the entire region. Probably the country, but they only showed us regional reports. Number one, my check was bigger than it had ever been. My name was in light. My name went onto the president's desk. I mean, everything because I was the only one that was doubling his quota. Everything turned out beautiful. But at the end of that month, rather than truly congratulating me, that woman said, okay, well, if you can do 60, now 60 is your quota. The next month, God sent me over 120. It literally doubled that much from 10 before I got there to over 120. You should be getting the gifs by now that this was not me. It was the kingdom working for me to prove through persecution that if you mess with my child, is what God says, I will send the kingdom government based on what key he unlocks and I unlock the key of submission. The next month she raised my quota to 100 and God sent me over 200 customers. I literally with two employees in a rundown mall was doing more than I was even gross at this point with the big store that I had with 12, 15 employees. Guys, people were just coming out of their cars, it didn't make sense, coming straight to the kiosk, saying I need 10 and 15 phones, I have a big family, getting approved and walking back. No reason, they just kept coming every day. Angels literally sent me who it was that I need so that God could prove a point. Everybody in the country saw what was going on that worked for T-Mobile, could see what was going on at this point and that it had to be the kingdom of God. And all the local managers, including her, had to see it as well. My last day on the job, God I had somebody, I don't remember her title, but she was one step below the vice president of the company, get on a private jet and come down to beg me to stay. She actually brought my regional manager with her, dragged her behind her. It was the only time I had ever heard that woman be silent. But the Bible says, with your well-doing, you will put to silence those who will come against you ignorantly. What am I saying? I am telling you that the kingdom of God works real miracles if you expect it and you operate it and you learn the keys of the kingdom. Every part of your life is supposed to be miraculous. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. But understand that it only takes faith if you're doing the impossible. So in other words, you must be doing something that was impossible in order to please God. In order to please him, we're supposed to be using these keys so that the world can see God manifest in you so they can say, I want what you have. Teach me about this kingdom. I'll be teaching on more topics and more keys on the keys of the kingdom. Just stay tuned to this channel. Like and share. Make sure that you can help be a witness to somebody else. If this has blessed you, share it with somebody and learn more of these keys of the kingdom of God. I hope you've been blessed.